Hi everyone, I'm Sloan from SloanBella.com and I'm back with another infamous channeled missing person, missing kid video. Now, this person has been missing as of to date 38 years. This is a case that has been in the forefront of the media. This young man, and I'm talking about young Johnny Ghosh, who was on his way to deliver newspapers like they did back in the day, filled his wagon up with his newspapers. Other kids' parents would throw the newspapers in the back of like a station wagon. Everybody drive down the street to their customers and deliver the newspapers at the end of the driveway, throw them onto the porches. You remember it. You remember it if you are from that time frame. If you're 30 and under, you probably don't know what the heck we're talking about. However, this boy, Johnny, who was born on November 12th, 1969. So he would be basically in my peer group range at this point had he stepped forward to let people know that he was still alive. I wanted to try to pick up on the energy. What was so interesting about this case for me is that his energy didn't come through to me but when I came home on the weekend there was a young man standing it's kind of hard to explain, but standing to my right side as I walked through my house and there was no one here, so he wasn't really there, but it's kind of like you peripherally see it and then the image goes into your head. This young man had dark hair, like a dark either leather, dark leather coat, collar up like he was cold, like burr, hands shoved in his jeans. I could see the rims in the, the bottom of the, um, the ripped jeans at the bottom, I could see that. I could see how he had um, let water and ice and all of those things like soak in the bottom of his jeans that were too long. And I kind of in my head said, who are you? What is it you want? And there was no answer. There was just a dead stare. It was a complete dead stare. Like I'm just staring at you. It was almost like I was looking across the room at somebody, didn't have my glasses on, couldn't see them, but was trying to figure out who it was because I could get no emotion, no name, no feeling, no nothing from this person. So I kind of just threw it to the side. And then when I went to sit down and look at my emails, I decided to look up Johnny Ghosh. Like, let me find out about this kid for some reason. So that stuck in my head and that's where we are now. Now, I did not pick up on Johnny's specific energy after a certain point, which is interesting. I think I'm reading the energy around the circumstance of when he disappeared because there's vibrations that live in our energy field that you can tap into that isn't necessarily tapping into the person who's passed on or perceived to have been passed on. But this young man that I kept seeing, and as he stood there to my right side, I saw other, other boys step forward and step forward. So there was about six to seven of these young men standing over here. I do believe those boys were passed on and I do believe they know Johnny and had been familiar with him. And they kind of all stood there staring. No one, it's not like when they're dead, they speak, but they implant thoughts into my mind where I begin to think like them and say things like them and I feel a certain way. So I started to meditate on Johnny and what I do when I do that is I pull up the chart. So I looked at the chart that I saw online which had Johnny being born November 12th, 1969. He was a late degrees Aries rising, first house Saturn in Taurus, early degrees, retrograde. Now that right there tells me about the relationship between him and his father. That relationship between him and his father was not what Johnny needed on an emotional level. Saturn in the first house often suggests that the person who owns the chart, born, born into the natal chart, their birth chart, has basically left the most recent prior lifetime in a hurry due to their own or reckless behavior on their part. You have to look obviously to the aspects to Saturn, to the sign that Saturn's placed in, if it's retrograde, if there's other planets conjuncting it, opposing it, etc. What I noticed with Johnny is he had Neptune, Sun, Mercury, and Venus in Scorpio. Venus was in opposition to Saturn, which was very interesting to me because I knew immediately in the most recent past life, I kind of flashed on it that he had left that past life due to belief system foundation, um, the way that he wanted to live his life versus the way that those around him wanted him to live his life. And even though he was an Aries rising who comes to start a new life cycle, he was finishing off an old life cycle with that Saturn in Taurus at four degrees in the first house retrograde. 
opposing Neptune. So that is where I began to get the information about what was going on with him. He basically was born into a circumstance where his belief systems, foundations, and the way that he processed how he wanted to live on the planet was going to be challenged. And I think we could say this when a young kid goes out, you know, 545 in the morning to do his job on the weekend, like every other young kid in America, North America, Canada, all over the place, delivering their little papers on their, uh, you know, door to door porches. This kid suddenly disappears. His wagon is left and his dog is left there and the dog is attached to the wagon and you know, at the end of that, the kid is gone and we have not heard or seen from him since. His mother does say that he did show up on her doorstep and did talk to her. Uh, some, I guess it's 10, 15, 20 years later, whatever it was, maybe it was like five years ago. I, I'm not really sure on that. However, I'm going back and I'm going back all the way. My mind went all the way back to when Johnny was six years old, six and seven. I'm going to say at this point that I believe there was some abuse going on with him by a male family member at that time in his life. That's what I feel. And I'm talking about physical, sexual, and emotional abuse at that time. I feel he was being conditioned or groomed. I don't know the extent because I wasn't showing that, but I kind of got a glimpse into a male relative and male friends of this relative around this young kid, this young boy. So here's what happens in instances like this. If you're five and six and seven and you are being abused, whether you're being smacked or sexually abused or, or um, what's the word, peeped on, however you want to word that, you kind of put it back into your psyche because little kids don't know how to handle that. And as a result of it, you stuffing it down and not talking to people actually makes a very clear sign on your energy field to predators who are looking to abuse other people. They can see it on you. Now, maybe I couldn't see it on them. Maybe you couldn't see it on them, but they can see it on you. And I feel that Johnny was being groomed. I feel that everywhere Johnny went, there was this feeling with, within him where this kind of exuded from him. So he was, in other words, an easy target. If you're starving and hungry and walking on the streets, for example, you're an easy target because if somebody offers you a hamburger, you're hungry, you're going to eat it. That puts you in a bad position rather than if you'd left your house and you'd eaten first. I do not feel like he ran away. I found it very interesting that everybody, uh, what, what I was shown is, do you remember when you were young and you played a game of telephone, you talked to people on the telephone? I mean, you talked to your, <laughs> not on the telephone, it was called telephone. You talked to one little kid and you said, I have red shoes. And then she passed it along and he passed it along. And by the end of the whole thing, it was some crazy conversation, you know, about I fell out of a balloon out of a window and I had flowers. And so it's not at all what it started off with. And it was like how the message changes. This is what I feel happened with Johnny Ghosh. I feel that when he disappeared, the messages that were truthful were being mixed up and confused by people in the neighborhood, in the area, in the environment, especially by people that were in charge of people's safety. So the public servants that we know as police officers that are in charge, I mean, by their own admission through their own job, at handling these types of incidences. So I believe that there was a game of telephone being played. What I'm seeing with this is there were deliberate actions by five people adult people who I feel were connected to the police force. Now, does this mean they were police officers? Probably two of them were, but there were three other people and there was information that was going out. So Johnny's family had a lot of things that they had to contend with because of this misinformation being deliberately spoken or telephoned from person to person. So, so many things and confusion was being caused by what happened on that day that it becomes very hard to understand. But I went back six years, five, six years, uh, six, seven years actually, to the beginning where Johnny was being groomed. I feel like he was being groomed. I feel like this was very much a concerted effort. This could have been a karmic thing in the sense that why is one kid targeted versus another kid versus that kid who's out doing a paper route by himself? This kid is, and but this kid's being seen. It had something to do with Johnny's... Oof, 
appearance and vulnerability at the time. And there was something to do with the way that he enjoyed things, the way that he saw the world, very Neptunian in the way that he saw the world. So that karma was covered by a spiritual joy with this kid. There was a happiness to him. I'm not saying he wasn't a typical kid going into puberty, a guy we all know. If we've been parents, we've had this. But this was something different. This kid was not a hardened kid. This kid was not somebody who would cause problems. This was a different circumstance. And that's what I found so interesting when I picked up on the energy. Now, the immediate time that I see Johnny missing, I immediately see him grabbed around the waist. He's not aware of what's going on around him and he's suddenly grabbed around the middle of the stomach or waist. He's pulled backwards and he's pulled into a vehicle. We know there was a vehicle there. That's common knowledge. But he's pulled. Somebody has got his, um, from behind his stomach. So it's like they grabbed him hand over face, hand over mouth stomach but he's pulled into this vehicle so he basically is like literally pulled down and it's not the vehicle they described they have described a vehicle that was seen speeding off there's a second vehicle and so there's more than one person that's aware of what's going on this entire circumstance is being watched in the neighborhood by certain people is what I'm seeing. So there are people positioned in the neighborhood that understand and know and see and can signal to what's going on. Kind of like when they set up a sting operation. I haven't been in a sting operation, but when they set up a sting operation, I gather they have people, you know, you've seen it in the movies, walking down the street, sitting on park benches, reading newspapers, talking on the phone, jogging, putting on lipstick, whatever. And these are really people watching what's going on around them. And so this is what I'm seeing. There are several people, again, I get the number five, around him aware of what's going on. These are all adult men. These are adult people. Now, what I am seeing is the minute that he's dragged into the car, his head is shoved down. As his head is shoved down, he basically loses consciousness. I'm not sure what it's from. If they injected something or just covered his body literally and sat on him. I'm not sure, but I feel the mind going loopy with that. And I can feel him for four years after he disappeared. I feel his energy in the four years after he disappeared. So if he disappeared at the age of 12, I see him from the age of 12 to 16. I feel he's a marketable commodity at that point. Immediately on the day that he disappears, he's out of town within three and a half hours. So I don't know which way a border is and I'm not even, I know it's in the Midwest where Iowa, but I'm not really sure actually of the city that he was in or what it looks like on streets and maps. But within three and a half hours, he's in a different area. He is being shipped like cargo. I'm going to use that word, but yet he's not being shipped. He's being moved like the Underground Railroad, how they used to hide people underground and move them across the country, just like they do out of um, Arizona where they have the coyotes bringing across young kids across, across underneath like that. This is exactly what Johnny experienced, but for a different reason and in a different way. He wasn't trying to skip a country. It was because they wanted to utilize him as a commodity. Now, the thing that comes to mind really strongly with him is that he was something that people looked for. So there was a prize on his head. There was um, uh Mm, uh, a prize, something about Johnny was different than a lot of other kids. So whatever that was, they were looking for. For example, if you're going to be purchasing human beings, which is what I think was going on actually, uh, both for group pleasure and obviously perverted pleasure, sexual pleasure, but a group thing. So this is a little bit ritualized. This is videotaped. This is filmed. This is people who can follow. Like we look at social media. We follow this person, that person. Back then, it was follow this boy. Watch the progression of the debasing of the soul, the human being. This is what I feel. Also understand that once this started to happen with Johnny, he's not really going to speak up or run away because they're constantly indoctrinating him, ripping away his self-esteem, telling him that he's a whatever they're telling him, abusing him in a way that is shameful to any person, let alone a young boy who knows what's happening to him, doesn't feel good and isn't right. And he's having to do something against who he is as a person that turns you in a way and you don't understand that 
maybe he couldn't get away, but I kind of feel like he pulled into himself. I feel that. I still see though that they track him and they mark him. They track him and mark him. So look at it in terms, I, I'm not sure how to exactly word it, but just like you follow somebody on social media and there's a ding and then they posted something and you look, it feels like Johnny went through his community and people were very well aware of who he was, including people in positions of power, okay, of power, in the city where he went missing from. I'm seeing approximately three men that remain there currently that know what happened to him. And I'm gonna go out and say this as well. I feel that by the end of 2021 and partway through 2022, so I'm gonna tag it at about middle May, of 2022, we are going to know what happened to Johnny Ghosh. That's what we're going to know. I feel like there's other things happening over here. So there's a spotlight to the left and he's on the right. We are seeing the spotlight focus over here, which uncovers what's over here. Sometimes when you rip down a wall and you're just ripping down the wall because you want to make the room bigger, but then you find things behind the wall like mold and this and that, and then you start digging and you find other things. I believe this is what is going on in this case. I cannot tell you because I'm not connecting to his energy on the other side, but the trail drops four years after he's taken. So for me, he went in a different direction after that four years. So I guess he would have been 16, 17 if he went missing at age 12. After that point, I see him going in a different direction. I see a lot of, um, well, we would know this, altering of the consciousness and the mind, a lot of abuse kind of reminds me like being shipped around when you have a pimp after you, that kind of thing. Um, but when he hits age 16, we'll just say 16 to 17, I'm not sure what happened because there is a lag in his energy. There's a transition in that energy and there are choices being made for him where he is moved in a different direction. I feel like people are very aware of what happened to him. I feel like they know, and I'm gonna say something a little bit surprisingly. I feel there were people that were close to his family, close to his parents, close to his father, business associates that absolutely know what happened to this child and have never said a word, a word ever since. Now, how do you prove this? I don't know, but that's a feeling I get from it. I can also say that it's time for the event to be closed, to be finished. They're telling me that, and that I am positive of. So I feel probably when we hit close to the 40 year mark with this young man, that there will be closure for his family. I do feel that way. I also feel there's some deceptiveness between family members. I feel there's things that are unspoken, non-communicated, just things that went on that set this boy up not purposefully, but whatever was going on in the family background, I feel there's a lot of deception, not with the mother actually. I know that they have said things about the mother. She is a mother and she is strong and she's not gonna back down. I get that, I actually get that. Why would you back down and who would tell you to back down? And I'm absolutely, extremely like shocked because I'm not sure that I knew about it. I'm from Canada, so it's a different country. But the fact that they didn't go out looking for a missing 12 year old, whether he ran away, went to get, you know, a hot dog, ran away, um, you know, went to join the circus. Since when do the police wait and say the kid has run away? They're the most vulnerable kids on the planet. The kids that are little and they run away, they run into everything because they don't have the wherewithal to understand what they're walking into if somebody offers them food and they're hungry. So that was shocking to me that that wasn't actually something that would have been acted on. The second thing that was very shocking to me is that the entire uh, authorities, police, FBI, nobody was paying attention. They were basically thwarting it, squashing it, and, and, and putting their thumb on it so it couldn't be furthered. My belief from what I'm picking up is that energetically this was in order to basically subjugate the family so that the information that these people knew about behind the scenes wouldn't be uncovered, basically protecting their own asses from what was going on. Then there's some element of just stubborn, like they don't want you telling them what to do because it's their job, their right, their communication, and how dare you question it. 
it was very interesting to me. I can see this power struggle, but the power struggle is being used as a distraction in this case. So if I throw bombs over here at you and then you don't focus over here, then we don't get, we don't find the answers in the middle. This is what I feel. I do feel that there's been communication about Johnny with a younger female member of the family. I definitely feel that. And I, I 100% feel, and I think it's probably very obvious that he was sex trafficked out. And it's interesting to me because at the same time frame, we had, you know, um, the Franklin cover up come up and then Paul Bonacci in jail, basically stating things that he knew about this, this, this young missing child and other missing children. So I think there's strong, strong evidence that that's what happened. But I do see that he was a commodity. That's the word I heard in my head. So he was definitely sold, but he was sold because of what and who he was like prime grade A beef. Okay. Stamped is what I'm seeing. So when you see a cow in the store and they say it's got the stamp of approval, it's the same thing I'm seeing with him. So these people took Johnny Ghosh, and it was planned. He was targeted specifically by people who knew the family. And I get that really strong. This is not random. This is not, there is nothing random about this case at all. It's very precise. If I were to describe it energetically, I would describe it as a way of harnessing energy. I see Johnny like he's a rag doll, energy facing down. I see straps on him, harnessing the energy back and putting his arms back. So Johnny was used um, in a way energetically by, I'm going to use the word vampires to describe it to you, but people that fed off of what happened to him in that town. It's very occultish and ritualistic to me at the same time as it is nefarious and child trafficking to me. There's elements of both components in this. It isn't just something random, crime of opportunity. Like if you're walking in the subway station and there's like a crack addict that wants money and, and you put your purse down, it's a crime of opportunity. You put your purse down at the wrong time. He happened to be one foot away from you. He takes off with the purse. You're not going to catch him. This is not it. This was planned out. This was planned out a good a good 16 months before it happened, something with the date is very important, the time frame, and it was specifically done. So I don't know what happened 16 months, 16 months, a year and four months before Johnny disappeared within the, the, the constructs of the fi family. If somebody changed their job, if there were new acquaintances made, but it the focus started then with him. But he was already being groomed as a six and seven year old from what I'm picking up. So there were other elements, not uncommon in families. I don't know that 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 had to do with the ultimate taking, except that he was groomed for this. In other words, it was something that was happening. So predators can see when you're wounded, your trauma, your wound. So that, that, that would be what I would say there. The rest of the circumstance is very interesting to me because it, it combines what we want to say in sex trafficking and occult ritual practices. I get both. Therefore, I feel there is tape, video, and all kinds of things on Johnny out there publicly that people know about, and I don't know why it hasn't surfaced. I do believe it's going to surface, though. I do believe it's going to happen the end of 2021, midway to mid-May of 2022. I feel another circumstance is going to lead us to what happened to Johnny, and I feel there will be closure in this case uh, roughly around the 40-year mark, right around that time frame. Okay, so for now, this is my first video. I just had to get it out. It's out. Um, and once again, my name is Sloan from sloanbella.com.